Ta-da. Oh, hey, oh, you're, you're falling off my shoulder. Oh, hi. Hey, welcome to Camp Read a Lot. I'm Mrs. Hammock. This is Scooter. And we are so excited that you're here at camp. Camp is a time for learning and having fun. And at Camp Read a Lot, we're going to spend our days talking and singing and learning and enjoying all kinds of activities together that will help you and me and Scooter to become strong readers. Parents, make reading an event. So take some time each day to set aside just a little while where everyone is reading. You can read together, you can read your own things, but set aside a quiet time for everyone to read. You might even read a book that's been made into a movie. And then when you're finished, celebrate it by popping some popcorn and making some snacks and watching that movie together. And then you can talk about how the book is different from the movie. Which one did you like better? And just talk about it. Just make reading part of your family routine every day and you are going to help your kids to reap the benefits because they will be strong, great readers. I hope you'll help. All right, campers, are you ready? It's time for us to sing our song. Hello, readers. Hello, writers. Hello, campers. I'm glad you're here today. Hello, readers. Hello, writers. Hello, campers. I'm glad you're here today. Let's get ready and do our pledge. Are you ready, Scooter? Okay. Now, repeat after me. On my honor, I will try my best to be kind to everyone, to have a smile on my face, and a song in my heart. Great job. You're learning that pledge, aren't you? Terrific. All right, well, this time I did not let Scooter get far away from me. That's right. He stayed right with me. We were out on a little hike this morning, just checking out the beautiful scenery here in the woods. And we've been talking about what game we're gonna play today. We're going to train our ears for sound. And today we are going to play the segmenting game. Now yesterday we played the blending game and the segmenting game is kind of the same game in reverse. I'm going to tell you a word and you are going to take it apart one sound at a time. You think you can do it? All right, Scooter and I have thought of some words that might be a little bit of a challenge for you because we want you to continue growing your super smart brain. So let's go to the little easel and get going, shall we? Come on. All right. All right, Mr. Scooter. Do you remember what the word was that we said we wanted to use? Oh, yep, that's right. Okay. All right, are you ready? Okay, thank you. I'm glad you remembered. The word I have for you today is jump. Jump. Are you ready to take it apart? Okay, let's do it. Here we go. J. A. Uh, j. A. Uh. What comes next? M. Mm. P. J. A. Uh. Mm. P. Jump. Great job. You did that really well. Okay, let me get these out and let's think. Do you remember the next word that I told you? I don't know if I remember what it is. I know it was a tricky one because we want to help them get stronger. What? What was it? Oh, that's right. Okay, here we go. The word is clap. Clap. Okay, are you thinking? All right, what's the first sound you heard? Good. K -k. What's next? Oh, I heard somebody say ah. Ooh, but remember we're doing clap. 
So we need another sound. Oh, there we go. Clap, clap. Great job. Those blends at the beginning of words can be tricky, right? Yes. Okay, let's see if you can do this last word. You ready? Okay, I remember this one. Smile, smile. Say it in slow motion. Stretch it like a rubber band. Oh, that's right. Or like Scooter's favorite snack, a marshmallow from a s'more. Smile. Okay, you ready? Let's go. Mm. I could. Oh. Sm. I. Oh. Smile. Great job listening to those sounds. Terrific. I have a joke for you. I know you're surprised, but it's it, this one is amazing. You're you're just gonna think it's so funny. Okay, why did the golfer wear two pair of pants? Why did the golfer wear two pair of pants? Do you know? Nope. Why? In case he got a hole in one. <laughs> Get it a hole in one is when the ball goes into the hole right away or a hole like in one pair of his pants. <laughs> That's a good reason to wear two pair of pants, isn't it? Oh, that was a good one. Oh, yes. He's clapping for me now because I told him I was going to give him only the number of s'mores for the times that he liked my jokes. So now he likes all of them because he wants lots of s'mores. Oh, you don't? No. I think he's teasing. All right, are you ready for our catch of the day? We have a really nice story today. Today, Scooter, we are reading a story about belonging. Belonging. Do you remember what belonging is, campers? That feeling that you have that you fit in, that you belong somewhere. Belonging. What? Yes, you belong here at camp with me. That's true. And with the campers, that's true. You have a strong sense of belonging because you know that you belong, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, let's get to our words so we can find out about the story, okay? Okay. Sit down right here. All right. Let's check out our catch of the day words. Here they are. And the first word is belong. Belong, it means to be accepted or liked by other people in a group, okay? All right, how about wisdom, wisdom? That means to know things, to be wise. And this one is imagination, imagination. Have you ever used your imagination? It means the ability to form a picture in your mind, something that you've not ever seen or that you haven't, aren't experiencing, that you're not doing, but you're imagining it. You're making that picture of you doing something in your mind. I know sometimes it's fun to imagine that we are going camping, right? Yes, so we're using our imagination all right, I know Scooter is probably imagining a snack because that's what he always is thinking about. Today I have a story about belonging. This story is so beautiful. Here is the cover of the book, the front cover and the back cover. The name of this story or the title is called My Name is Yoon. Yoon. So let me get my glasses on so that my eyes have power. And the author is Helen uh, Ree Corvitz, and the pictures are by Gabby Swiatkowska. Ooh, that's a hard name to say. All right, let's find out about Yoon. My name is Yoon. Let's jump in. Oh, I love the title page of this story. Look how cute she is. Isn't she sweet? 
All right, let's look. Here is a dedication page. Remember I told you sometimes authors and illustrators will dedicate the book to somebody that they love or somebody that's inspired them or been helpful to them. My name is Yoon. I, am, I came here from Korea, a country far away. It was not long after we settled in that my father called me to his side. Soon, you will go to your new school, and you must learn to print your name in English, he said. Here, this is how it looks. Y-O-O-N. I wrinkled my nose. I did not like Yoon. Lines, circles, each standing alone. My name looks happy in Korean, I say. The symbols dance together. So here is what her name looks like in her language, in the Korean language. And in Korean, my name means shining wisdom. I like the Korean way better. Well, you must learn to write it this way. Remember, even when you write in English, it still means shining wisdom. So here her dad is helping her get ready for her new school. I did not want to learn the new way. I wanted to go back home to Korea. I did not like America. Everything was different here. But my father handed me a pencil and his eyes said, do as I say. He showed me how to print every letter in the English alphabet, so I practiced and my father was very pleased. Look, he called to my mother. See how well our little Yoon does? Yes, she said, she will be a wonderful student. I wrinkled my nose. My first day at school, I sat quietly at my desk while the teacher talked about cat. She wrote cat on the chalkboard. She read a story about cat. I did not know what her words meant, but I knew what the pictures said. She sang a song about cat. It was a pretty song, and I tried to sing the words too. Let, later, she gave me a paper with my name on it. Name Yoon, she said, and she pointed to the empty lines underneath. I did not want to write Yoon. I wrote cat instead. I wrote cat on every line. I wanted to be cat. I wanted to hide in a corner. My mother would find me and cuddle up close to me. I would close my eyes and mew quietly. Cat, cat, cat. My teacher looked at my paper and she shook her head and frowned. So, you are cat, she asked. The ponytail girl sitting behind me giggled. After school, I said to my father, we should go back to Korea. It is better there. Do not talk like that, he said. America is your home now. I sat by the window and watched a little robin hop, hop in the yard. He is all alone too, I thought. He has no friends. No one likes him. Then I had a very good idea. I drew a picture for the teacher. Then maybe she will like me. It was the best bird I had ever drawn. Look, father, I said proudly. Oh, this makes me happy, he said. Now do this. And he showed me how to print bird under the picture. The next day at school, the teacher handed me another Yoon paper to print, but I did not want to print Yoon. I wrote bird instead. I wrote bird on every line. I wanted to be bird. I wanted to fly, fly back to Korea. I would fly to my nest. I would tuck my head under my little brown wing. The teacher looked at my paper and again she shook her head. So, 
You are bird, she asked. Then I showed her my special robin drawing. I patted my red dress and then I patted the red robin. I lowered my head and peeked up at her. The teacher smiled. How was your day, school day today? How was school today, my daughter, asked my mom. I think the teacher likes me a little, I said. Well, that's good, my mother said. Yes, but at my school in Korea, I was my teacher's favorite. I had many friends, but here I am all alone. You must be patient with everyone, including yourself, my mother said. You will be a fine student and you will make many new friends here. She's having a hard time, isn't she? Do you think she feels like she belongs? Hmm, not really, right? Where does she feel like she belongs? Right, back in Korea. The next day at recess, I stood near the fence by myself. I watched the ponytail girl sitting on the swing. She watched me too. Suddenly, she jumped off the swing and ran over to me. She had a package in her hand. The wrapper said, cupcake. She opened it and gave one, gave me one. She giggled. I giggled too. When we were back in school, the teacher gave us more writing papers. I did not want to write Yoon. I wrote cupcake instead. I want to be cupcake. The children would clap their hands when they saw me. They would be excited. Cupcake! They would say, here is cupcake. Do you see her using her imagination? She's not really turned into a cupcake, right? They don't really see her flying, flying up in the air. She's imagining what that would be like. The teacher looked at my paper and today you are cupcake, she said. She smiled a very big smile. Her eyes said, I like this girl, Yoon. After school, I told my mother and my ponytail, about my ponytail friend. I sang a new song for my father. I sang in English. You make us so proud, little Yoon, mother said. Maybe America will be a good home, I thought. Maybe different is good. The next day at school, I could hardly wait to print. And this time, I wrote Yoon on every line. When my teacher looked at my paper, she gave me a big hug. Aha, you are Yoon, she said. Yes, I am Yoon. I write my name in English now. It still means shining wisdom, Yoon. Isn't that great? What a nice story. Maybe you came to America from somewhere else and you felt like Yoon. Maybe you didn't feel like you belonged here and it took some time for you to get used to a different school and a different place. And that's okay. When we try different things, sometimes they feel uncomfortable and sometimes they don't feel natural or normal. And it's hard to try or go new places and do new things, but keep trying. You never gave up, did she? Now, partly because her mom and dad would not let her give up, but she kept sticking with it. And did you notice what happened at the end of the story? She started to feel like she belonged. Really good. All right, let's take a look at our reading chart, our reading power chart. And we, we're talking today about challenges that the character faced. Now, a challenge is something that was hard for the character and then how she overcame the challenge. So there was something difficult and then she did something to help get through it. So. Let's talk about the beginning challenge. Do you remember what it was? What was the first challenge that she faced? Right, she was going to a brand new school and she did not 
Yoon did not feel a sense of belonging at her new school. She did not feel like she belonged there, right? She wanted to go back to Korea. How did she overcome that obstacle or that challenge? How did she get over it? What do you think? Right? She got to know her teacher and she made some new friends. So when she made new friends and got to know her teacher, that helped her to feel like she belonged there. She wasn't a stranger, right? Yeah, and sometimes that's all it takes is a little time. So what else was a challenge for her? Do you remember? What did the teacher ask her to do? Yes, the teacher asked her to write her name in English. Could she do that? She could. Remember, her dad taught her how to write all the letters. Why, why didn't she? Right. She didn't want to write her name in English. She didn't like the way that it looked. So she didn't want to write that. Even though it still meant the same thing, shining wisdom, she did not like how it looked in English. How did she overcome that? What, what did she do to, to overcome it? She wrote cat, bird, and cupcake instead. But then once she realized that her teacher understood her and knew that she was feeling nervous and not uh, comfortable, once she knew her teacher cared about her, she wrote her name in English, right? We all have obstacles or challenges that we face, even though we're not in a story. Sometimes everyday challenges. And we need to think about how we can overcome those challenges. And I bet if you stick with it, you will be able to overcome challenges that come your way. Let's tell a joke, shall we? And then we'll go to the activity table. I have a joke. Are you ready down there? All right, my joke is this. Why do scissors always win the race? Why do scissors always win the race? Because they always take shortcuts. <laughs> Get it a shortcut? Yeah. And they're cut and they're scissors. Oh, that was good. Oh, I love these jokes. They are so good. I'm going to have to get a new joke book. All right. Are you ready to go to our activity table? Fantastic. I have something fun that I think you will enjoy doing at home. Come on, Scooter. Let's go. All right. Today, we are going to do an activity inspired by our story. What did Yoon have to do? What did her teacher ask her to do? To write her name in English, right? So today, I want you to write your name nice and big on a big piece of paper. I wrote Scooter's name. Yes, I know. I knew you would be excited about that. So here's Scooter's name. And now after you write your name, you are going to figure out a way to decorate it. Now you can use crayons or markers or paints, whatever you would like to decorate your name. I have a special tool. These are called dots, dot markers. And they make beautiful little dots that kind of look like confetti, or I always think they make it look like a little party. So what I do is I open the lid, and then there's a little spongy part that has the ink on it. Now, I don't want to put my fingers on there, otherwise I'll get that all over my fingers, and my mom might not be very happy with me. So what you're going to do is, if you have these at home, you're just going to press down, and I'm going to make his name, I'm going to take the red dot and I'm going to put red dots kind of all over on different letters. And then I'll hold it up and show you. And then I'll pick a different color and I will do that. I love these dot markers. Now notice that I'm just poking it down. I'm not painting with it because I want them to look like dots. Isn't that cute? They look like confetti. All right, so then I'm going to put this lid on. I'm going to pick another color. Oh, maybe I'll do green. 
All right, and I'm going to put some more dots. I'm just going to dot his name and make it look so fancy. And then I'm going to keep going and do all the colors that I'd like. And then he will have a beautifully decorated name. Do you think Yoon would have liked her name better in English if she had decorated it pretty like this? I think so. Skinnamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skinnamarink-a-doo. I love you. I love you in the morning and in the afternoon. I love you in the evening and underneath the moon. Skinnamarink-a-dink-a-dink, skinnamarink-a-doo. I love you and you and you and you. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.